Come on up. Yeah, come on up. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Pastor John this morning and Tyler. We are here. Uh, we're going to start live streaming in just a couple of minutes. That's not true. The service is going to start. We're already live streaming. That is true. Uh, Tyler is going to be your host today online. So whether you are at our website uh, at cplakewood.info and you've logged on there, there's a great chat box, some prayer requests, stuff you can do there. We're super happy that you're there. He'll be chatting with you. And if you're on Facebook, Tyler will be with you as well. So uh, if you have prayer requests, you can get those to him and we'll use those during the service today. Uh, if you are with us, let us know that you are here. So not that you're you know, not just watching, but uh, comment in the stream. Uh, let us know that you're there. Let us know how many people are watching with you. It's kind of always fun to know. And if you'd like to fill out our online connect card, you can do that at cplakewood.info as well. Uh, so during this time of being kind of disconnected physically, we want to make sure you guys are, you know, that we know that you're there and you know together that you guys are all this together as well. So Tyler, anything we learned from last week or anything different this week that we're doing? Uh, from last week, uh, basically, we really loved the engagement. A lot of comments on the feed, people uh, yeah. sharing prayer requests, celebrating together, uh, commenting on the message, different things. Um, as always, too, if there is something that we can do on our end to improve, go ahead and comment that as well. We're more than uh, trying to make this a great experience yeah. for all of us. Absolutely. It's a brand new adventure for everybody, so we love being in that with you. We're going to start in just a couple moments with some music. Uh, so you can enjoy that as you kind of gather your hearts and minds to worship this incredible God that we have today. One special thing we are doing today, we heard last week that a lot of your pets were joining you uh, worshiping, which is really cool because you don't get to do that here in the worship space. Uh, so we would love for you to snap a picture with your pet at, you know, being the church today, worshiping with you today. Uh, post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CP Lakewood. We'll find that and hopefully we'll be able to post them on our stories uh, as we go on Instagram and Facebook as well. So Tyler's going to find those too. That's what we would love. We would love to see those pictures. I can't wait. How many puppies and how many cats are we going to have? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be so cool. We might get some surprise animals too. You never that know. That is true. That know. is true. All right. So a couple, um, we're going to, we, I think we have about one more minute and then we're going to be ready to go. We're glad to be with you today.
us today. Uh, here we are in this beautiful last Sunday in March where uh, I think March just came in like a lion last night. That's kind of what happens, right? With all the wind and the storms here in Chicago. Uh, but we are here together, gathered to worship this incredible God that we have. The God who reaches down to us, who has given us his son, that we could be connected with him in such a way that all of our sins would be forgiven, that grace that we couldn't earn on our own, but that he has given to us is ours with this treasure and richness. And all of these words that I'm using, I'm going to use again, and they're going to make sense a little bit later on in the service. Because today we're talking about freedom. And as we close out this series, the key with freedom is understanding God's grace for you. And when we get that grace right, when we understand it in such a way that Scripture teaches it, and the way that God really kind of reaches to us with it, it changes our entire life. Uh, and not in such a crazy way like we've had over the last couple of weeks. In such a way that gives us peace and calm, that gives us this sense of joy, even in the midst of the most strange and terrible things that happen. This is who our God is for us. Uh, so today I look forward to uh, worshiping with you, for with teaching you from scripture a little bit later on, and just for going through this time of worship together, wherever you are, um, I'm really excited about being together with you. So as we enter this time, do feel free to check in, let us know that you're here. Uh, go ahead and comment on the streams that you're on, uh, and let us know that you're there so we can know that we're worshiping with you as well. But let's go ahead, uh, we're going to sing another song. What do we have lined up next? Revelation song. Oh, perfect. Revelation song.
so good to be with you today. But many more people are joining us on the live stream during that last song. We hope you really enjoyed it. One of our favorites around here as well. That's such a great picture of who our God is, what he's done for us, and, and really what he is all about. That he is here to bring us closer to him. To let us know that we are loved, that we are enough, and that we have a great purpose in this world. So um, we're going to keep singing about that. We're going to talk about it all morning. Uh, so hope you enjoy this next song as well. This one's all about what we believe. us to be connected with you. You give us such great freedom in this. 
that no matter where we are, no matter how we're dressed, no matter how bad our breath is right now, depending on if we brush our teeth yet or not, we are together and we are in your presence. We give you thanks for this. Uh, we ask that as we worship together today, that you would instill this thankfulness in our hearts. May it flow throughout our lives and what we say and what we do with the people nearest to us. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So uh, it's so great to be with you today. I'm Pastor John, and we are going to be talking through a whole bunch of stuff today. But we're focused on this uh, idea of freedom. We've been using some ideas from the book, this book called Seculosity by David Zoll. And we're going to talk about a few things with that, but I want to give you a couple instructions here as we, hopefully many of you just joined us during our, our music and our worship set before this. We would love for you today to do something special. We'd love for you to uh, take a selfie with your pet who's attending church with you today. So they don't usually get to do that, but they're there with you today. Uh, so take a picture, snap a selfie with your church, with your pet at church with you at home today, and uh, post it to Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CP Lakewood. So with the hashtag CP Lakewood, and we'll be able to find it. Hopefully we'll add it to our stories so you guys can see each other's pictures as we go along today. Also, a couple things that we do here at Crosspoint normally, we would love for you to check in. Let us know that you're here. There is a great check-in card on our website at cplakewood.info that you can use to let us know that you're worshiping with us. That'd be great. Or you can simply comment on the feed that you're watching with your name and maybe who else is watching with you. That way we can uh, just know that we are in this all together. Uh, we'd also, uh, there are a couple things happening as well. Uh, if you would like to um, uh, donate now, if this is a part of your regular tithe and your offering, uh, you can do that. There's a few ways that you can do that. We'll bring those up on the screen a little while later. Uh, but as we get into the message today, uh, I want to invite you to do something first. Uh, and this is going to be interactive. So on the screen, there are four options. It says, what are you struggling with most right now? Or what is your struggle right now? Uh, a, politics. B, food. C, church. Or D, leisure. So, in other words, what are you struggling with the most right now? The field past few weeks we've been talking about busyness, parenthood, um, all these kind of things. Are these a struggle for you now? I know that right now, uh, politics can be a struggle for me as well because we're getting all of our information digitally right now. And you know that people, whether when they're face to face, they may not feel the need to share their political opinions with you, but digitally, when you're not face to face, it's much easier to do so. So I'm sure that you, as I am, are inundated with all of this kind of stuff. So please, in the comments, let us know which one is, uh, is a struggle for you right now. And we'll kind of take a poll, we'll see which ones are really hitting home today. How about food, is that hitting home for you? Um, are you in the camp of eating a whole lot more now that you're staying at home? Or eating a whole lot less because you're trying to ration it out? Either way, food might be a problem, uh, a struggle for you right now. What about leisure time? What about entertainment? How are you staying entertained? I know that Netflix is sending me emails all the time like, hey, you might like this set of videos. You might like this series. And I've heard there's a few going around that everybody's binging right now too that are just uh, incredible train wrecks that you just can't take your eyes off of. But is that all you're doing? Kind of sitting on the couch, does that really kind of uh, you know, get old after a while? How else are you keeping your mind busy? How else are you keeping your, your body active? Is leisure a struggle for you? What about church? This may not be right in the front of your brain, it isn't mine. We're trying to figure out how to be church and do church in very different ways right now. It's a lot of fun, it's exciting, it's new, it's different. Um, but it's also a struggle to make sure the technology works just right and everything else. Are you struggling with church? Because you don't get to kind of be here and do the same normal things that you do. Are you struggling to be church just as a person, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus? Because your kids are driving you crazy right now, right? It's been a week, two weeks at home with them. Your husband, your wife, things are, we're living in tight quarters now. It's a little bit different. Is patience just waning? Are the arguments happening? Is it just a little bit more difficult? Are you having trouble being church? Are you having trouble trying to find a way to help others out when you can't physically go to them and help them? I've heard this is a big struggle too. With a lot of people, they just want to do something. They want to be active. They want to help other people out, but we can't right now in all the ways that we know how. We've got to be creative. Is this a struggle? All right, so let me know in the comments. We're going to come back to this in just a little bit. 
Let me know in the comments which one you are struggling with right now. A, politics. B, food. C, church. D, leisure. All right. So we all, that's a great comment, Jeff Norton. We all need to practice social distancing with the refrigerator. I like that. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, you got to watch it. We might just put on the, you know, the, the quarantine 20 here. Got to be careful with that. Nice. All right. So how do we deal with all these things? Well, I wanted to take you on a little reminder tour of where we've been the last few weeks. Uh, this has been the number one thing that people have commented to me about the last couple weeks, about what they remember about this series that we're talking about. This idea that everything, well, most things in this world are very, very good. The things that God calls us to do are good, like parenting, like being busy, like food, like leisure. Even politics can be very, very good. But when we elevate them to a stature that places them above God, they become the God themselves. We take out that middle O, and that thing that used to serve God becomes God. And when that happens, it changes around everything in your life. It changes around what you, uh, what you were chasing after. It changes around how you make decisions. And instead of, trying, of thinking that you're going to find freedom within that area of life, you actually become enslaved by it. Parenting, right? When you make parenting the highest good, even above God, and it becomes the best thing in the world, the thing that you're constantly thinking about and trying to figure out what, what do I do, how do I do it, and be the best that you possibly can, you make it into something that it wasn't meant to be. And you get trapped by it instead of letting it serve the people it's supposed to serve. You can say the same about all the rest. What about food, right? Many of us struggle with food things, whether they're actual full-blown eating disorders or just lifestyle decisions. Uh, you know, do I choose this beautiful, you know, pear or Cheez-Its? You know, which one? Well, it's, it's a choice we've all had to make at some point. Um, the choice that I prefer is, do I want Al Pastor tacos or do I want steak tacos? And that's, that's a hard enough decision for me most days. But we struggle with this. And when we make that decision or we make that food or that search for food, into something that's bigger than it's supposed to be rather than just serving our bodies, making us strong and healthy, giving us some enjoyment as we do so, it can become a God in and of itself. And we start to lose track. We start to be enslaved by the food. Do you see how this works? Do you see how this can happen? We can take something that's good and make it into a God and it enslaves us. So our goal is to, how, to find freedom within this, to find freedom within this world and really the place that we have to go is we have to go to God. We have to realize that the things that we are doing cannot get us to freedom. Our purpose, our stuff cannot get us there. It cannot create an identity that gives us freedom. Instead, we have to see that our identity is what gives us the purpose and that that can give us freedom. When we know whose we are, when we know that we are the Lord's, when we know that we are uh, loved beyond compare, that we are enough in God's eyes, that we have a plan and purpose, that he has a plan and purpose for our lives, we can rest in that, be free in that, and live out all those other things within it. In that way, we keep God at the top. We keep God at the highest priority. And everything else that's good serves him. Does this make sense? I hope this makes sense. Uh, this is a really kind of simple way to think and talk about it, but it's also very difficult to actually put into practice, which is why we see so many things in so many scripture verses where this really comes back to us. So here are a few of the stories as a reminder of what we've talked about over the last few weeks. So we have this first one uh, that is all about uh, the story of, yes, Okay, this is one the woman at the well. All right, I know the Messiah, the one who's called Christ is coming and he will explain everything. And of course, Jesus says, yeah, it's me. And I've come to explain it all. To so this woman who was you know, living in so many different ways, who everybody had cast aside, who trusted that the Messiah would come and explain it all, Jesus says and reveals himself to her and says, yes, listen to me, follow me. All this other stuff that you're worried about, I will put it in order. I'll give you freedom within that but follow me first. 
And then we go back to the story of uh, Mary and Martha that we talked about as well, and how Mary and Martha were searching after different things. Martha was being busy trying to serve all the people in the house. What she was doing was good. Martha was sitting at Jesus' feet. What she was doing was good. They were both doing good things, and yet Martha was upset. She didn't think that Mary should be, should be doing that. And Jesus says to her, there's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it won't be taken away from her. Mary had seen at that moment that busyness was not the answer. That just keeping yourself busy, of making sure that you kept everybody else's expectations up of you, that you kept everybody else's opinion of you and reputation of you to be at the top, was not as important as who you were in Jesus' eyes. It was not as important as focusing on him. So this morning, as you guys are focusing on him this morning, as your scriptures are open, as you're listening here today and watching, as you're taking this time when you probably had to scroll past, you know, 27 other cool videos that you could have watched, funny cat memes or YouTube, whatever it was, you could be watching anything right now. And instead, you are sitting at Jesus' feet, opening up the scriptures to hopefully feel closer to him, to learn a little bit more about him, and to, well... Be encouraged in your faith. This is what it's all about. So Jesus keeps coming back to us with these great, you know, stories, these great happenings that happen in his life to point us back to him. One of the things that we saw next in the following weeks was that we are called to be stewards of the children that we've been gifted, right? This was the key with parenthood. How do we put parenthood in its place? Well, we see it as stewardship. Parenthood is all about stewardship. Because your children are only with you for a time. Uh, you've been gifted them by a God who is gracious and is loving. So instead of, well, either putting your children in the first place or putting your parental skills in the first place, we put God in the first place, realizing that all good gifts come from him and we are simply stewards of them. We don't own them. We haven't created them. We just take care of them to the best of our gifts and abilities. So that's the key with understanding that aspect. This is all coming together here. Can you see how this works together to help you find freedom? Sitting at Jesus' feet, understanding that he is the one to be listened to, realizing that we're not in control of it all. It all fits together. And then we looked at work last week, and it was all about how we can put work in its proper place, because we're all trying to figure that out right now. If you've tried to do um, teleconferencing, if you've tried to keep working, you're using Zoom or Skype or all these digital things, and it's crazy. I bet you've gotten a lot of extra work done during meetings you've sat in because you can sit there and stare at the screen and still type away and do lots of other things when nobody can see you. Or you can add in a fun background like you're at the beach or wherever you're at. So, you know, you can feel a little more, uh, you know, happy while you're just sitting in your house. But we put work in its proper place when we realize that everything we do, we do unto the Lord. Everything we do we do for him. It's all about how we are his ambassadors, how we are working under his, well, under his mastership, under who he is for us. So how do we put work in his proper place? Whatever we say or do, we do it as representatives of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. I mean, that's, that's the key, right? Whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, we do it as people of God. When we remember that our identity is in him, that we find freedom in him, we can go out and do incredible things in his name. This is what he calls us to do. He gives us this purpose. So, can you do that? I hope you've had a way to do that this week. I hope you've seen a way to help somebody else out this week. It's been strange. But have you been able to get out of the house? Have you been able to go somewhere different, whether it be digitally or physically, and help somebody out? Have you been able to give encouragement? I saw this week in my own inboxes and in uh, emails that people in my family received, a lot of words of encouragement. Of people saying, hey, remember that time when so-and-so did this? We really appreciated that. I'm seeing more people seeing this, this disconnection that we have of not seeing each other physically, kind of going back and being thankful for those and wanting to say the things that maybe we were never able to say or maybe we never had the courage to say face-to-face, -face, but now we can do it digitally, and that's a great thing. How can you encourage somebody this week? How can you be that person of encouragement? All right, so 
some other great scripture from Colossians as we worked through that as well was all about how we keep working uh, for the Lord, remembering that he is our master, that he is the one through whom we do everything. Uh, so in Colossians chapter 3, he keeps going, Paul does, and he says, Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather for people. And that's a huge idea. You've all had um, you know, bosses or people that you've worked for that really aren't the greatest. Um, Audrey's shaking her head right now. She's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We've all had that experience where things haven't just gone well. Can you remember that time that really you're working for the Lord? You're using your gifts and skills to your best ability working for him. As kids go back to school this week doing e-learning, well, they remember it. Well, you guys remember it. That your school is your work. Are you doing it to the best of your ability? Are you learning and growing as you would just for the Lord? He's there. Yeah. Remember the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward that the master you serve is Christ. I mean, this is the key. Everything we do is for the Lord. Now, we, this entire series, we've been talking through different aspects of life, like parenthood, like busyness, like work, all these things. But do you know what these are all called when we put them together? See, there's this whole idea that encapsulates all of this, and it's this, this big word that's called vocation, all right? And we sometimes use that word in fancy ways when we talk about specifically our work. But when we talk theologically, when we talk about the Bible, when we talk about what God has for us, vocation is something bigger, it's something more all-encompassing than that. Vocation is all about you using all of who you are for the good of God's kingdom right here, right now. When we see it in that big picture realm of vocation, of everything that we're called to do, we can make sense of this, that we find freedom in that, right? We find freedom in who God has made us to be using all of our vocations, whether we're parents, whether we're children, whether we work in an office, whether we work from home, whether we don't work at all, whether we are a neighbor, all these vocations we have, we use for the Lord's good. He uses us. He shows other people who he is, through us and through what we do. So this vocations, all of this, uh, is part of God's plan for us. It's a big word for that. So let's go back to this. Let's, let's, uh, let's circle back. Have you heard that a lot this week? A lot of people talking about circling back. Let's circle back to this. Uh, what do we have? What were some of the, some of the comments? Do we have a great uh, gathering around of any of these options, Tyler? A, B, C, or D? Yeah, uh, a few Bs. Uh, a few Bs? We had some E's. What? It was off the list. All the above. Struggling with all the above? The winner was E, all the above? Whoa. Okay. The struggle is bigger than I thought. <laughs> wow. All right. Struggling with all these. I get it. I mean, I think that's why we put them on the list because I'm struggling with all these too. Um, when we think about these things, about leisure, food, church, politics, as vocations of areas of our life instead of individual pieces, can we see them a little more clearly? Can we see how they fit in a little more? If they're just part of who we are. Politics is part of who we are. It's not all of who we are. Food is part of who we are, not all of who we are. Leisure time is part of who we are, not all of who we are. Parenting is part of who we are, not all of who we are. But our identity as this unique person of God, this unique brother or sister in Christ, given to do all these unique things. I mean, can you see yourself in a bigger picture than that. I hope today that you can, because that's how Jesus sees you. He sees you as somebody who was worth dying for, who was worth going to the cross and, and spreading out his arms and saying, I'm going to give up myself just for you, because you are worth it. Even in the midst of all your foibles and all of your struggles, you, as this creation of God, as this body and soul put together, called by name, called for a purpose, it is worth it for me to sacrifice myself so that you will be connected with me forever. That when this life passes away, we will be together. But that while you're still here, I can give you a purpose too. That when you look to me for that, it will all make sense. You'll be free to be the person that I've called you to be. That's, that's what it's all about, friends. That's what it's all about. And if, and if you're watching this today and you're just not quite sure about who Jesus is, about what place he has in your life, I encourage you to try this out for a bit. To instead of seeing yourself as all these little different pieces of, of whatever, see yourself instead as this person. 
the singular body and soul created by God, put together in a new way and called to be an incredible purpose. Called to have an incredible purpose in this world. You are somebody that Jesus loves and died for and connects to God forever. And when you see it that way, in this realm of unfailing love, of this realm of eternal connection, I hope that you see that there's a freedom there that you couldn't experience before. And when you live into that, when you really dig into that, you start to live a life that now you start to realize is the best life that you were trying to live. We see this pretty clearly in these amazing verses from Paul that I love to bring up all the time. If you're a regular cross pointer, um, don't tell me you're sick of these verses. You can't be sick of them, it's the Bible. But you can have them memorized and they can be part of your life. It's from Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 10. They're incredible verses. It's all about grace, right? You've been saved by grace. You didn't work your way into it. You couldn't be a good enough person for it. God gifts it to you. We can't boast about it. It wasn't about us. It was about him loving us so much that Jesus died for us and gives us life. We receive it simply as a willing, uh, as a willing person and as a gift, as a treasure that God gives us. So what does he do then after he saves us by his grace? We can't take credit from it, for it. It's a gift from God. And in verse 9, yeah. We see that salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done so that we can't boast about it. It's that boasting part, yeah. But verse 10 is my favorite, and you guys know that, right? So in verse 10, we see that we are masterpieces. God has made us his masterpieces. He's uncovering it in us all the time. Every day when he makes us new in Jesus, he shows us again that we are loved and that we have something incredible to offer this world because of him. So what has he done? He has put into place all the good things we're called to do already from the beginning of time. And all he calls us to do is to walk in it. We don't have to determine it. We don't have to create a to-do list to make it happen. We don't have to do, we just have to walk and follow God. There is a freedom there that can't be earned. There's a freedom there that can't be found in any other way except through Jesus. So I hope that as we think about the things in our lives that are good, that we keep them in their place, that we don't let them get out of order, and instead we keep God at the top. We remember that he is the one who has gifted us with all good things, especially salvation itself. And making us new through Jesus each day, he calls us by his Holy Spirit to walk in his ways, to be the people he's called us to be in all of our vocations, to live out that freedom that freedom that we so desperately want. So I hope this series has been good for you. I hope that you've been able to start putting things in perspective. I hope that you've seen at least one way, at least one struggle that you can make some headway on. And I hope most of all, that you can see yourself today and tomorrow and the next day as somebody that God loves, as somebody that is enough for him, and somebody that has a purpose to live in this world for the good of God's kingdom. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us today, for leading us, for guiding us, for always knowing exactly what we need at, at the times that we need it. We thank you for all of the vocations that you have called us into, whether we're parents or children, whether we're working or not working, whether we are serving our neighbors, however we might be doing that. We give you thanks for those opportunities. We ask that you would make us a blessing to the people around us, that we would walk in the good works that you've already set before us, not to get favor for ourselves, but to show other people how good you are, to show them that Jesus is for them and that they are just as dearly loved as we. We pray this all in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to switch gears now. We're going to sing, and now is the perfect time uh, to get in a prayer request. If you would like for us to pray for you, for something that's on your heart right here live today, Go ahead and put your prayer request in right now. You can add it in the comments if you're on Facebook. If you're on our website streaming, you can add it in a, a chat window if you like. Uh, but let us know that you'd like for us to, to speak it today. But get those in right now, and we'll use those right after the song. If you haven't had a chance to check in yet, let us know that you're watching or fill out that check-in card on our website. Do that now as well.
service as local civil servants, keeping everything running and working so that we can be safe and work as a community here. We ask Lord that you keep them safe, let them serve uh, with great honesty and integrity, reminding them each day that they are simply and only servants of the people. 
In all of this, we pray for our people here at Cross Point and Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world who are worshiping in different ways today. We ask that you would remind us that we are together no matter where we are at physically, that we are joined together through the love that Jesus has for us. And we ask that you would allow us in different ways and in new ways this week to reach out to people around us, to encourage them, to give them joy, to give them hope in the midst of everything that's going on through you. In all this, we simply ask for your, uh, we ask for your help, we ask for your mercy, we ask for your peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's make a confession today. Um, let's confess that we have mistakes this week. Let's confess that we have... Uh, that we need Jesus' forgiveness, and let's hear again how much he loves us and how he gives us his forgiveness as well. So let's take a moment and do that. Uh, let's, well, we already sang this one, Eddie. Let's keep, let's move on to the next part. We got to sing this earlier. I hope you're with us. The, the I believe, the creed, uh, we got to tell the story of who God was. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll confess our mistakes. We'll confess our sins. Let's use the words uh, that are on the screen. Lord God, we confess that we have chosen to listen to our own desires rather than your will in our lives. Please forgive us and show us your mercy. Remind us of the unfailing love that only you can give. By your spirit, fill us with the peace and joy of your salvation. Amen. This is the peace and joy that God gives to you, the joy of incredible salvation. And may you know it today in a new way. May all the mistakes and the things that burden you, that give you guilt and shame that you feel today, may you let them go. Lay them at the feet of Jesus because he has taken them all upon himself and he has paid the price for them. And now it's as if God says those do not exist anymore. They are gone from my sight. They're gone from my presence. And instead, all I see is this incredible masterpiece that I've created. You are forgiven. So with peace and with joy, trust in that in all that you do today and this week until we meet again. As we close with this confession, uh, we'll close with a few other things as well. Uh, we're gonna do some announcements and talk about uh, what's happening over the next week. And then we're gonna close with a song. So we'll sing, we'll sing to end as well. So um, a couple of announcements, things that are happening around Crosspoint. Uh, if you're part of our community, you received an email this morning and in that email it had all kinds of great stuff. Uh, it had a schedule for the week, it had links to these live streams, and it also had links to our online giving. Uh, you can give in a couple different ways. Uh, they should be up on the screen for you right now. Uh, you can text to give, you can give at our website. Uh, you can also uh, give through the app that you have on your phone, Church Center app. You can also give through Facebook. We saw there were some people doing that today. Uh, great ways that you can support the ministry that's happening here at Crosspoint. Great ways you can support our church together, even though we're dispersed, we're still all together. Uh, we would love for you right now to comment with any celebrations that you have. If there's a birthday or an anniversary or something incredible going on in your household, put in the comments now and we'll be able to celebrate it towards the end of our announcements here. Uh, do let us know that you're here. If you're worshiping with us, check in, uh, which is our check-in sheet, our check-in card at cplego.info, or you can just comment in the feed that you're watching. And prayer requests will take all week long, so if you have that there, go ahead and do that. Um, so, uh, there are a few things you can do right on our website, ways you can help out. Uh, we have a quarantine survival kit that will help you do a couple things as you're kind of bored at home trying to figure out what to do. Ways that you can grow spiritually, great things are there. Also, we do need some people to help. We've got a couple teams that we use here at Worship. If you'd like to be a live host uh, at home, you can do that. Uh, if you're a musician, we'd love to have you here. Thank you, by the way, to all of our wonderful musicians and people that are here this morning. Uh, it's a great blessing to be serving with you. And um, if you'd like to help others out, there are ways you can help our neighbors. Our food pantry team served this week in a, in a safe way. It was able to help many, many, many families in our community get the food that they need. Uh, there's also a couple other ways you can help out too. Go to our website and go to the card that just says, very simply, help out. <laughs> You'll find a couple ways 
to do that. All right, anybody have anything else up there? Or are we celebrations and anniversaries? All right, very good, let's do it. Celebrations, anniversaries. Anybody celebrated anything this week that we could, uh, that we could talk about? Oh, Debbie Coyne. Tyler's mom, I know you're watching. Happy birthday, congratulations. Uh, Tyler called you out, by the way, but it is wonderful to celebrate with you. Uh, I hope that uh, you have an incredible day enjoying another year of God's blessings. Any other celebrations or anniversaries that we see on here? Nope? All right, everybody. Um, we are so excited and happy to have worshipped with you today. Uh, we're going to do this again at 1030, so share this with your friends. Let them know that we're on. You can always access it throughout the week as well. But I hope this week that you are able to find freedom in who God has made you to be. That you are an incredible masterpiece that he has already created. That he makes new every day in Jesus. And then he gives you a purpose to live out all the time. That's your vocation in all these different ways. So see yourself as who God has made you to be and let that be lived out in the world. So, yeah. One more celebration that just came in. Oh, late uh, celebration. All right, Tyler. Annabelle Mahaney will be 16. Ah, uh, Annabelle Mahaney. 16th. Happy 16th birthday. That's a great birthday. That's a great birthday. birthday. That's a great birthday. <laughs> it's very good. Annabelle, I we'll hope you have a great birthday. And I hope you all have a great week as well as you go into this world in a little bit different way, sharing Jesus' love and his peace with the people around you. Let's sing together.